John, you were first. Thank you. Uh, this is to <coughs> Graham. Uh, uh, the issue of the exchange rate between the uh, local parallel currency and uh, the national currency. Uh, I, <coughs> I think it's completely impossible to put up rules about what can, uh, what should be done, or how can we avoid that the exchange rate changes away from what we wish it to be, etc. Because it's it. It's, it's incredibly easy to circumvent any sort of rule, so you will, if you do not allow the <coughs> exchange rate to float, it will, uh, you will have a black market uh, between the local currency and the national currency. And I, uh, uh, I suggest, I would like your reaction to that, that uh, the point of having a, a, an exchange rate uh, seen from the position of the uh, people managing the local currency is simply to suggest what's a reasonable value of this thing. And, and, and the reasonable value is simply that one point in the local exchange uh, currency is one uh, pound in the international currency. Just to give some sort of suggested anchor, and then you just hope that it won't fluctuate 10 times lower or something away from it. But it must be allowed to in my opinion, yeah. because you, can, you have to live with it. Well, uh, I mean, there are a number of um, points that I, it's, I mean, it's a very, very, I think it's a very complex question, yes. first of all, because uh, first of all, in the startup phase of the establishment of the currency, when you're trying to communicate the currency proposition, and people are saying, you know, what's this about? You have to be able to keep things relatively simple. You know, most people you're communicating, they're certainly not. Uh, 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 you know, currency experts, and they need to know. You know, the first thing people are going to ask is, "What's it worth?" You know, and also, you. I, I do believe that you have to have a degree of exchangeability. So people, if even if they don't actually use it, to say, you know, this underpins the currency. It's okay. You 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 obviously want to be able to encourage the continued use. But if anyone wants to get out at any time, you're not forcing them to stay in, and that that currency exchange rate is published and known easily. But hopefully, you know, that's and I didn't get a chance to go into the sort of complexities because you could spend a whole day really on those things. But you're going to give exits the opportunity for somebody with currency to exit, but at the same time, you're going to try and provide additional incentives for them to, to maintain the currency in circulation. And again, the whole point of weekly um, reporting for the currency management, you know, what is actually happening, what is the le level of liquidity, is it going up or down? And you do need to be able to take, um, you know, steps to try and, 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 and uh, correct any imbalances, in, you know, in, in the growth of the currency. I don't know if that answers your question. So, yeah, to some degree. <laughs> okay, okay. Can't use too much time now. <laughs> yeah, okay. Jeff? Yes. A hmm. uh, question for Joe. I'm feeling a bit dumb this morning, so, and, and I missed the very first part of your, your speech. But I was trying to think how, if I'm a, a Kenyan uh, farmer or person planting trees, um, with the diagram you gave at the end there, you showed that the payments would be coming in these PPCCs. Um, how would I redeem those uh, in the first instance? Uh, rather than thinking about them gaining value later on. Uh, and of course, the other value coming from the trees later on, that you'll explain. Just, um, you know, if I need to redeem them in the market to buy goods and services, immediately, how does that happen? Well, uh, in the case of the protection of standing trees, which are not planned uh, for harvesting for non timber products, there is no revenue stream within the parallel party methodology to, to allow for that. So, in other words, um, since no money is being generated from standing trees within parallel party practice, the PPCC in that instance could not be exchanged into national money. And, in, and therefore its function would purely be as a, as a medium of exchange, which potentially could be exchanged into national money. I wasn't talking about national money. How could I just spend it to the economy? How would it be introduced? No, how could I, if I own these 
Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Spend it into the economy. Why would people want it from me? Right. Mm -hmm. Well, um, first of all, because of its potential as a micro savings instrument, mm -hmm. so it has benefits. Um, in Kenya, where the national rate of inflation is something like 18% or more, then it's more stable. That's the first thing. Uh, the second thing is when you have a group of participating businesses, and in rural areas, you have a lot of farmers who have crops which can be exchanged, but they don't have a medium of exchange to use to exchange other than barter, which is inefficient. So this provides an additional source of liquidity in that sense of purchasing power, uh, which can be spent within participating businesses or farms, uh, and potentially exchanged for national money um, at a later point in time if the tree is used for, uh, for uh, generating revenue from non timber products. Please. Yes. Yes. Um, I'm curious about the geography of the situation, of where people are planting and are they kind of close to each other in terms of distance and if they're using the currency you propose, you know, would that exchange be uh, rather convenient for them to do amongst each other? I mean, what the numbers of them are and right. uh, would they make a community essential? Right. Would that be a community that would use this currency exclusively? Well, it's, let me just start by saying that it's being implemented, the parallel plan is being implemented in um, the Naivasha National Park, which is in the Rift Valley province of Kenya. Um, the, the projects there, some of them are dispersed as far as I know, and so they're not necessarily connected in such a way, the communities aren't necessarily close enough geographically to, to necessarily have some kind of exchangeability between um, two instances of PPCC. Mm -hmm. um, but really, those are important questions that would have to come up um, further down the line um, if this project was to be piloted um, with the full design. That would be necessary to consider those sorts of things. Um, the way it works at the moment is because sometimes you have one investor investing in one particular area, um, then um, any issuance of PPCC could, could be tied to people within the vicinity of that plantation or um, farms or businesses within that vicinity. What kind of numbers are we talking about then? Which Hundreds mean, of people or 50 people? Well, you would, need, you would need enough to make yeah. it viable as yeah. a medium of exchange. So you would need places where people can spend yeah. and, and would be happy to receive. Right. So in that sense, you need to have a strong circuit without too much leakage mm -hmm. and localized uh, production and supply, which is why it might be quite useful to, uh, which is why it might function quite well as a medium of exchange because of the local nature of production and supply of uh, uh, food and, and all sorts of other... Right, so uh, these communities are sizable enough for that. Oh, yes. Yeah, yes, yeah, and yeah. I, I really am very impressed by you know, the, the linking of currency to trees. It's just a marvelous <laughs> idea. Well, I think it has applicability. Sorry, if I can just make a point. I think it has the, you know, the basic principle it has applicability in, in a much wider range of things. And I'm, I'm thinking, for example, um, uh, you know, where, where, where people are, are taking, growing, say, forestation schemes, and we have a number of such schemes in Ireland, uh, say, for firewood, you know, which will be, say, import substitute, coal substitution, uh, you know, where, where particularly, particular types of trees are grown, and, and, you know, this becomes a currency and matures with age. Um, it's like a stock. Absolutely, yeah, and that people can buy into. So in other words, they, they could potentially use these currency units as, as something to purchase their firewood, mm -hmm. you know, when, when, when it matures in the season. Mm -hmm. yeah. Obviously, you wouldn't need it in Croatia. Yeah. Well, I, I think that's important yeah. to, yeah. to building, uh, sometimes in cases uh, like in Kenya, where indigenous trees are being cleared and replaced with plantations, tree plantations, but not indigenous tree plantations, then you lose the you're really um, having a devastating impact on the ecological heritage of a country like Kenya. And I'm sure it's applicable to Ireland and other places as well, because every place has its own indigenous varieties and species. This would be a way to foster protection mm -hmm. for these indigenous trees. I think it has that potential, because it, I mean, the currency is backed by real value. Yeah. You know, trees have real value, and they also have um, a more less tangible value in the form of the value ecological value. value. But with PPCC, you can also provide real tangible monetary value so it can be exchangeable so that people don't just have to be promised well you'll have a better right. you'll have a better until climate they, in the future. Until they learn the further implications of what they're doing. Mm -hmm. If they don't understand them, they can be uh, 
incentivized by the money mm -hmm. I have, yeah. Uh, so I have a question to Kyren. Uh, I would like to ask uh, about the uh, the kind of uh, currency you described. Uh, does it uh, somewhere exist in your country or in Great Britain? And is it uh, allowed by the law? Um, yeah, I mean, there, there, uh, well, on the first question, mm -hmm. uh, um, yes, the, 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 uh, there's been numerous currencies uh, in Ireland. Some of them are let's-based currencies. Mm -hmm. um, at, at the moment, there's a number of communities because um, you know the economic, uh, the local liquidity in the economy is quite reduced, um, and I, I know this has been alluded to by a number of speakers. So a number of communities have have set out local currencies, uh, and they're, they're really quite small affairs at the moment. Um, so we're we're working on on one such project, uh, and and that would be. It's actually sponsored by a commercial organization, and I know this has caused uh, some difficulty with the purists who felt that uh, it should just be a commercial, a, a community-based currency. But we feel if 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 a if a value can be established in the principle of complementary currencies, uh, albeit sponsored by a commercial entity, then it it would still help us to improve and understand how these currencies, complementary currencies, um, can can exist. Mm -hmm. On your second point, um, which is a very important point, is the legality, um, because it's a question we're continuously asked, and uh, we have taken the step of, of getting a senior counsel or a, a legal expert's opinion, professional opinion, and, and that is published and is available uh, under articles, on, under the EU legislation. So we believe, and, and that is free, that is available if, if, if you need help to find that, we're happy to make that available. Um, that, that, that complementary currencies are legal under EU legislation. Mm -hmm. And uh, maybe uh, one question. Uh, do you think if the mainstream uh, currency like uh, British pound or US dollar or euro will not be infected by the uh, financial parasites, uh, yes. maybe we will don't need uh, complementary currency. What do you think about it? Um, I'm, I'm not sure. Are, are you saying that if 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 the if yeah, main currency, mainstream currency, yeah, wasn't affected beca by because the, the uh, I think the financial market is uh, yeah, somehow uh, in turmoil. Yeah. Uh, crisis. This, yeah, in crisis. Uh, sorry, can I deform deform one? Uh, um, deformated. Uh, deformed. Deformed. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Yes. If it, if it will be not uh, deformed, maybe we will don't need the local currency. I don't well, know. <laughs> I, I, I would argue, I mean, it's part of the nature of the debt-based currency mm -hmm. is that it is, su it is such a destructive um, thing because it compels people to, to, in order to repay the loan, whatever use they put, you know, they invest in a project, that has to, that the value of that project has to grow faster than uh, the original principal plus compound interest, and yeah. you know, for many people, that's that's been, you know, that that's been a real problem. The difficult and the challenge is that the economy needs to grow at a minimum of five percent or six percent a year. But the downside is that if the collapse starts happening, it it, it creates a real, you know, it it, it becomes self-sustaining and it continues to get ever worse. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's it's we're into as long as we're linked to debt-based currencies, we're in this continuous roller coaster type environment. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, designed to fail. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, 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 some of the terminology is is of the bankers rowing the economy and to to row so that they have a cycle where they're increasing the money supply into the market and encouraging people to borrow and to, to create bubbles and then pulling back the money supply and getting to and you know getting to uh, take take in all the collateral that has been pledged against the loan. Okay, thank you. Rolling us over the uh, rolling us over the uh, waterfall. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. And I just, I'd also like, if I, if I may, uh, Mr. Chairman, 
uh, just to mention a very interesting study, and again, I'd be happy to make this available, but it was done by a Swiss academic team uh, using network analysis methodology analyzed um, company ownerships worldwide, so uh, public yeah. corporations. And part of the difficulty is it's very difficult to see who owns, what mm -hmm. company owns what company because they're all uh, a, a series of companies in Greece, maybe owned by a series of companies in Croatia, who are in turn owned by companies in Germany, or et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So to get a clear visibility, who owns what, uh, is, is actually quite difficult. So this team used a methodology um, to, uh, if you like, analyze databases, and there was a lot of number crunching in these databases, but eventually they came up with a paper which provide an ownership list of the companies right at the very top of the pyramid, so to speak. And what was very interesting is the top, uh, I think they provided a list of, of about 100 companies. The top 50 companies are all the major banks mm -hmm. in the world. And yeah. right up at the top of that is Barclays Bank. <laughs> well, <laughs> okay. Yeah. Just, just, just on this, this exact issue that you, you asked. Um, if national fiat money uh, became issued by government, not by private banks as debt with interest, uh, we would still need complementary currencies because, okay, we would remove some of the destructive aspects of the current system, but then we would also then rely on our new personal power through government mm -hmm. spending and government decisions. Mm. And that is a, a centralization of power which many people would begin to question, and rightly so. So rather than saying that that's not the answer, it's part of the answer, mm. but also complementary currencies, which therefore allow means of exchange to be issued by communities and freely by private enterprises, their own self issued credit. I mean, there's, a, there's a sense here that, that uh, issuing uh, currency is one of our many freedoms which uh, we need to reclaim. So not only do we need to confront and change this non-reserve banking system we have, but also, even if we're successful with that, we will need complementary currencies. Uh, and not to need them, it should just be our right. Yeah, thank you. Good point. Mm. I, Great. Have, I have one question to uh, both our speakers, uh, which will probably conclude today's session. Uh, so, uh, we had an interesting discussion about this yesterday in the bus with uh, um, Michael Hudson. Uh, the question is, when you, when you are designing cu uh, currency or when you are like, starting a new uh, project uh, to uh, revive the local community, like, like it's in Kenya, uh, what steps should you take? to make the currency acceptable by a wide and comprehensive uh, variety of agents to create that kind of self-sustainable ecosystem so it circulates without, uh, uh, without special artificial support. Irving Fisher put it simply, the, the state should take it as a payment for tax. But it's too, it's too easy, <laughs> yes, for us. It, it's what, what they do, but for private-based currency projects, this option is available. So is there any universal uh, algorithm for that or some principle that every currency designer should know? Mm -hmm. This is for both speakers. Well, if I just, if I, if I, just I, I think the first thing is uh, and people are extremely sensitive, you know, about money. And, and that's people talk is easy, but then when you start getting to the parting of money bit, mm -hmm. um, Oh, you want me to put down a thousand euros? Well, straight away, you know, talk goes out the window, and it's really focused on the value. So it needs you have to bring, you have to communicate, 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 and you have to, uh, you know, we're working with various communities uh, to implement the scheme, but we can't be the implementers ourselves. We can only facilitate. So we we have they the the communities themselves have to take ownership of the implementation, first of all, so that they have to have a clear reason why they are doing this, what values they're trying to mm -hmm. bring about, 
and and why it is a good you know why it is a good idea to do it mm. um, because you know and, and, and they have to you know they have to go through all the challenges you have to bring them through all the challenges but I mean it's it's a community who are doing it we we see it as a currency design we we we're, we're bringing if you like the experience of currency design and helping them to implement their own system I don't know if that answers. Uh, well, actually, the question was sorry, it's, it's, it's time. Uh, the question was, uh, for example, for Brixton pounds, mm -hmm. they offer eleven Brixton pounds for ten yes. British pounds for uh, different schemes uh, for different uh, schemes based on uh, quick profit, like pyramids and so on, which effectively operate with their own internal currency. They just offer high interest, high yield for every currency unit. So you, you get one dollar today and tomorrow it becomes two dollars. That's the initiative. The question is, are there any principles to provide everybody with initiatives so they accept this currency, even without the need for, for a state to take it as a tax payment? I, I, I think people need to see that it, it is backed by, by, by readily uh, liquidatable value. Mm -hmm. For example, um, if if a shop were to issue currency back, you know, currency back system that, that somebody could go into the shop at any time without any conditions that were clearly defined understanding and, and could redeem goods to the value, you know, the, the, the face value of the note mm -hmm. at any time. So they must be redeemable for some physical Asset, a physical asset, asset. Yeah. yeah. That they can translate it into goods and services of that value. Okay. You know, I, I agree with what Pierre just said. I think that when you start off, I think we said yesterday or at some point during the, the, the conference that when you start off with having a currency backed by um, a, a current national currency, then you do provide some kind of reassurance to people's concerns mm -hmm. that this is something um, real as they might think of it, uh, and because it's exchangeable international money. Um, as for uh, the, the, the secret code or the algorithm, um, that's a more difficult question because each place requires different contextual considerations, uh, especially when you're working in, in very foreign environments such as rural Kenya. Um, however, what I would say is that the nest, the, you really need a strong circuit made up of as local um, as possible, producers uh, and suppliers of local goods. So for example, where I live, I live in a very rural place, uh, and uh, mostly farming communities, and people produce a lot of their own food. And food is very much you know, a, a type of wealth, you can even call it money, it's something that everybody needs, it's uh, absolutely vital. Um, now because the supply um, of these fruits and vegetables in the area is very local, you can create a circuit made up of uh, businesses which use local suppliers. And the circuit can be strong because people don't need to exchange out of the local currency to purchase something from Japan or France or wherever it may be. Mm -hmm. So for example, if you have a circuit made up of, um, of traders, and those traders trade in televisions made in Taiwan, you then have an issue. Because the trader may be able to accept the currency in part to pay for, say, staff salaries, yeah. but the rest it needs national money, uh, or it would need to exchange back into national money. And at that point, you, you have a, a small break in the circuit um, because it's necessary to exchange out of the local currency. We get the same balance of payments deficit problem. Yes, you have. Yes. I think I was first. Sorry. Oh, you didn't see me. Oh, sorry. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> on this point. Yeah, this sorry, is but good. please be short. Yeah, okay, okay, you can go first. We can try that first. Very quickly, there's, there's evidence on this. It's not hypothetical. So, for example, you asked about what uh, works in terms of getting people engaged in these things. So, yeah, you mentioned bricks and power. Brixton Pound is, is an example of it not working. <laughs> now the spin is that it does, but they spent about 200,000 real pounds on a currency which failed, which was relaunched in September. 
And which the new system shows 20,000 pounds of transactions last time I looked. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the problem, if you create a currency where people must buy into it with national money, means that you have to have a lot of effort put in to say, why should you do this? Now, there's a very different approach, which is mutual credit, which is totally self-issued. And so you don't need to have enough spare cash to buy into it. Therefore, you don't have to be a middle class environmentalist or sort of a, a local city nationalist to buy into it. You can be just basically in need of a new means of exchange. Yeah. So in Greece, for example, the currencies that are being created right now are mutual credit and they are thriving because people are, do not have spare euros. So the idea of buying into a currency with any spare euros if you're poor is insane. Mm -hmm. So there are, we, we need to look at what's actually working. And so we can hypothesize that it's nice to have things back, but if you haven't got money, why would you participate in it? So, so I, I would, I would say look at what's actually happening and the data that's out there. And so we, 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 uh, we, we with Community Forge, are arguing for mutual credit because it's not about communities I heard, take ownership or, or take control. That, again, that's, a, that's a, a mindset of us reaching out with our, you know, asking for funds from some body to then reach out. Absolutely not. That's not our approach. We, we respond to community need. It's them who want to create the currency because of their own situation. And then we will help them do that. Thank you. Thank you. Please, 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 please respond. We, the big problem is lack of liquidity. You know, and, and that's the problem we have to solve. And it's, it is by, by, by issue by use, basically. Yes. Well, we, have, we can take advantage of that there is so few people in this room. <laughs> and we can continue discussion almost with the same fish level of efficiency on the coffee break. So, uh, at this point, thank you very much. But I have to uh, have the session closed. And, uh, see you in 15 minutes when we will have, uh, uh, in, in the main hall after coffee break, when we will have a session with uh, Richard Werner, uh, Poverty, Shen Turnbo, and Nick Pogerty and Joseph Zitoli, authors of Energy by Currency Tech.